Hey, Jamie Edwards here, and today I want to talk to you about how you can be agile this year, even if your company isn't. You know, if you've watched any of the videos across my YouTube channel, the very first one I talked about how, in my opinion, lean or agile software development methods were really designed and brought into the industry to help deal with uncertainty. Now, why is uncertainty something that's so important? I've got a whole video on that as well, but it's really because no matter how good of a software development team you have, or how sure the data tells you that your product's gonna be successful in the market, or how much you might think you have a handle around a problem that your customer needs, there's always something that can come along and completely derail your efforts. So the better a company can get or you can get at being able to cope with uncertainty, the better chance that you're gonna really build the best thing you can build despite changes happening. And it's really interesting that over the 20 plus years that I've developed software, and I've worked for a lot of different companies, especially as a consultant, I found that really your success in your career is going to depend a lot on the culture of the company you work at. And, you know, a lot of us often think about company culture as some sort of unknown thing that controls whether we get in the door during the interview process. And really, in my opinion, the, the key thing about software development culture at the company that you work at is how do they deal with change? When something happens that nobody could predict at your company, are people shamed? Do people sweep it under the rug and just kind of pretend it didn't happen? Or do people embrace the fact that there's going to be things that happen as we go about building our product that there's no way we can anticipate. And how does the culture of the company and the teams and the people get set up in such a way so people can feel safe? So when things happen that people didn't predict, it doesn't turn into an instant blame game and just shut people down. So one of the things I wanna really help people with this year in 2018, and one of the things you'll notice is I kinda of changed my setup here, so I'm kind of getting used to this. I've got this set up so that I can do more live streaming and I'm also gonna hopefully have some guests this year. But what I really wanna help you with this year is developing a mindset so even if you work at a software company where there's still this illusion of control, people think that they can plan everything out, that they can pick the perfect architecture and that they aren't gonna have anything happen that makes them maybe look like, you know what, I didn't think that was gonna happen is, for you to have a mindset where you embrace uncertainty. And this is something that nobody in my entire career has really helped me with. Uh, however, I can tell you that there's something that happened to me last year that I think may resonate with some of you that if you're somebody out there who's really stressed out in your career and you've been maybe developing software for 5, 10, 15 years, you're upset about it, this story of what I went through last year, I, I hope that it helps you see that there are ways for you to be happy about developing software again and for you to not let you know external circumstances like the way that your company treats you or the way that maybe the culture shifts derail you from being healthy about how you develop software. So last year in April, I was working for a consulting agency that I worked for for over 10 years, and I essentially had a nervous breakdown. I, I mean, I didn't go to a doctor and get diagnosed as having a nervous breakdown, but I had about three straight weeks where I wasn't sleeping. I mean, I was sleeping two to three hours a night. And I don't know if you've ever watched any documentaries out there on sleep deprivation. You know, some military organizations use this to punish people. People. They basically don't let them sleep as a way to control them or break their psyche down. When I went through this last April, it was one of the most horrible things I've ever experienced in my career. Um, my home life, you know, a lot of different things were going on in my life, including my career, that kind of all came to a head last April. And I essentially used all my sick time. Uh, I used all my vacation time and I had to resign. And I ultimately uh, lost the job that I was at. I was not fired, but I, I resigned from the job. And I spent 
eight months after that, you know, trying to get better. And uh, yes, there was an eight month period last year where I didn't really work for anybody else. I, I really just worked on myself. Now, that might sound extreme and it did cost me some money and it was something that really you know, scared me a lot. I had to deal with coping with uncertainty a lot and I'm still dealing with it to this day. But what I want to share with you and, and where I want to hopefully connect with you is that you know, one of the things that happened, I think, that caused me not to sleep, I actually went and got a sleep study done. I saw multiple different doctors trying to figure out why wasn't I sleeping? You know, I would literally fall asleep and then it, the moment my eyes would close and I would get to the point where I drift off, I'd just wake right back up. It was like something was screwed up with my nervous system. Well, I did have you know, some dietary things that I've been working on for years. I'm I'm a little older, I'm 41, and I'm still trying to take care of myself from some of the stupid decisions I made, you know, earlier in my life. But the, the big thing that I really found was the root of the issue was it was a psychological issue. It was that, you know, I had spent 20 years over my career, you know, trying to make software companies work better. And no matter how many books I read and how much I learned about how to influence people, and this is some of the things I, I do teach on my YouTube channel, and no matter how much I tried to build bridges with people or learn the right technology, it seemed like I'd always hit these brick walls and I'd always get put into these situations where the company I worked for was asking me to do things that just were, in my opinion, ridiculous and not achievable and when that would happen you know i would try to somewhat stick up for myself but you know because i i have a family and i have three kids uh you know and and, and i have a lot of responsibility to them i would often i think let these companies push me around too much because of this fear that you know oh it's going to be harder for me to find another job or you know i don't have the energy or the time right now to find the right fit so i'll just put up with this for a little while and you know Earlier in my career, I actually did a few videos uh, on my YouTube channel about my software development journey where I talk kind of at a high level, not so much about my personal life, but more about just my career. You know, I used to stand up for myself more, but in a really rude, bogue way. I mean, I, I used to berate and yell at people if they didn't agree with anything I had to say. I was a complete jerk, to be honest. And once I got into consulting about a decade into my career, Instead, what ended up happening was I flipped the other way, you know, uh, too far. I was trying to please people. I was always trying to be agreeable and easy to work with to a fault, to a point where, you know, people started walking all over me. So, you know, I spent, again, this last eight months really learning about digital marketing, connecting with a lot of people, just taking some time to heal. And it really reset my mindset about my career. And, you know, what I really want to do at this point in my career and where I think I have the highest value is, you know, having tried to convince businesses for so many years to do agile and lean methods better and, you know, bring in continuous delivery and bring in DevOps and all the different things that everybody's excited about, you know, technology wise and process wise in the industry. Often I'm just finding no matter how much they say they want to do it, no matter how much money they spend on it, they, they really don't support it fully because what it really means is they have to give up more power. And Ultimately, you know, you can look at political, you know, landscapes of different company, different countries, you know, the United States where I live or, or many other countries, you know, you can look at even family dynamics or, you know, lots of different groups of people. Uh, when people are in positions of leadership or power, it takes somebody who's really mature to lead people and not boss them around. And unfortunately, most companies, you know, and this has just been in my experience working with over 30 different companies over my career, there are very few leaders out there that really have the emotional intelligence and the maturity to do that. So instead, what ends up happening is if there's a leader in place and they look at it like, you know, I'm I'm the shit. I know everything. And, you know, if I make the best decisions, everything in my company is going to go smoothly and they expect everyone else to look up to them and seek, you know, approval from them. Well, that just boil bubbles down to every other layer in the organization and people just treat each other like this is the way that I get ahead is I establish you know how well I perform and you know somebody rewards me and I move up and I get power over other people so I don't think that's a good 
a breeding ground or model for anybody to build their career on. I, you know, I'll share with you more in, in the rest of my YouTube videos why this just, just it, it doesn't work. I mean, it, it never delivers on its promises. Instead, you know, this year, my goal is to serve, if you're someone out there who's in technology, maybe a software developer, or an operations person, a product manager, and you've been doing it for a while, and you don't feel like you've been getting recognized for how hard you work, I'm going to challenge you this year and I'm going to help you to not maybe work so hard the way that you have in the past. Now, I'm not saying by saying this that you should be a slacker or anything ridiculous like that, but I also think I didn't set good enough boundaries for myself and it caused me physical pain. I mean, I lost my job, right? Uh, and, and it's not so hard for this to happen to you as well. And I don't want to see this happen to you. So there, there are some things I've learned. You know, I'm not a guru. I'm not somebody who has the answers to every single problem that you might come across in your career. But I can say I've done a lot of things wrong. And I think by telling you more of my story of where I've really failed over my career, I can at least help you avoid some pain. And the other thing is, you know, having worked with over 30 different companies, you know, th there's a period I went through where I thought, okay, I understand this industry and then found, oh my gosh, I don't. And then thought, okay, now I understand it. No, I don't. And, you know, I went through that the first maybe 10, 15 companies I worked for. And you get to a point where you really realize there are some serious patterns in the IT or tech industry just around how people treat each other. And if we don't start to understand these, and if we don't start to find a way to develop software together where we are, you know, essentially leading each other and leading ourselves to a more comfortable way of doing software development and not doing it in just a way where, you know, we're trying to achieve things, but where we're trying to do it sustainably. You know, uh, I, I will tell you, I have not had the best relationship with my children. I mean, I have three kids. One of them's 21 years old. You know, all, all my kids, well, two of them are, are, you know, adults, young adults at this point. The other, my daughter is a little younger, but you know, I, I sacrificed my relationship with them when they were growing up uh, on a lot of levels. I mean, I, I consider myself, I super loved them. I provided for them. I tried to hang out with them, but man, I was so wrapped up in work and achieving things and getting ahead and having enough money for retirement and, you know, be having the right title at, at the right age and all that crap that, you know, I really blew it on a lot of things. And so, you know, I'm still a consultant. I make a very, you know, a good bill rate that is that is great, you know, for where I'm at right now. But, you know, I, I took a big hit financially this year, you know, with those eight months uh, of not working. And I really just spent it honestly healing and, and really doing a lot of reading and research and trying to figure out, you know, what went wrong. I, you know, somebody who's been doing this for over 20 years, you'd think I'd kind of have it down by now. Um, I've learned so many things, but, you know, I really learned that the, the biggest problem was I was trying to control things that I just couldn't. And I was trying to go about my career like I could, you know, uh, create this sort of pocket of certainty around me where things wouldn't happen to disrupt me. And it was all because it was learned behavior after working in corporate America for so many years. So, you know, coming back around, and I know I'm rambling a little bit, you know, some of these videos uh, that I'm going to be doing this year, I'm going to try to challenge myself a little bit to be a little less structured. My, my videos I've done before, I like them. You know, they're how to more of how to videos. I'm still going to do those. And I think that they offer you some value, but I want to try to do more kind of one on one me and you talking types of videos so that we can really get to know each other better. And hopefully you'll engage with me more and, and share some of these videos with maybe other people that you know that are also suffering or stressed out in their careers. And I really want to, you know, as somebody who has been trying to help companies do digital transformation or agile development for so many years, most of you out there know what agile development takes. And because you've been on a team that's done it right once. And, and from, you know, that point on, you've, if you're like me, you've worked for other companies that haven't done that. And you've just been trying to get back to a good, psychologically safe, exciting, innovative, good culture to do agile software development. And so, you know, 
I'll continue to talk about really good methods that I know are going to help you for developing software and processes you can use. But I think the biggest value that I can offer to you that maybe other people out there, you know, in social media aren't doing quite as much is I want to offer to you some really big insights I've had about just people and humanity and how, you know, the behavior and the psychology of humans impact software development. And again, not from I'm some sort of expert or guru, but I do think I can really offer you value that's going to make it so that as you're continuing moving forward in your career, you don't sacrifice your relationships with your family. You don't set yourself up for just unrealistic, unmet expectations where you get to the point where you're like a lot of software professionals I come across that are just jaded and they basically look at it like you know my career is over at this point so stick with me this year i i am committing to you that i'm going to start doing these videos more often i want to share more of really my thoughts not just around where you know i can share things with you that i think are going to help you but also where i'm struggling you know i I am actually trying to do a better job myself of not burning myself out. And I'm trying to heal from what I went through last April. And I'm also trying to change the industry in a way where hopefully if we can get a loud enough chorus of people who are actually doing the work, the engineers, the product managers, you know, the testers, the support people, the people on the ground that actually make companies operate. If we can get enough of those people to understand what it, what is it about software development that seems so hard and so different from other industries. And, and then there's, you know, enough momentum behind that. I think at some point the leadership will have to take notice because they'll start to understand how they're really setting themselves up for failure. If they don't just start to create safer environments where people can be more successful and just feel more safe. So that's it. I hope you liked this video. If you did, please share it with other people. If you're watching this on YouTube, give me a subscribe so you can you know, get updates. You can click the little bell icon next to it and you'll actually get notified whenever I put new videos up. If you're on SoundCloud or any of the other podcast platforms listening to this, there should be a way for you to subscribe or follow as well. And if you're on Facebook, uh, I have a, a business page, Jamie Edwards Media, that you can also like if you want, and you'll get any of my videos as I put them out there. So thanks again for watching today, and I look forward to helping you with your challenges this year around quality of life and sustainable software development. Thanks.